Hello, Slicey Dicers. This is Brian with another knife review for you. Today we have the Spyderco Para 3 Lightweight. Uh, I, I, this is going to be kind of a first uh, first impressions kind of uh, review. I've only had this thing for a couple hours. Um, I was out of town. I knew it was going to arrive when I was out of town. I just knew it. I It kept getting delayed in the shipping and I just knew it. And sure enough, I was at the airport here in, in New York on my way to... Germany and I got the email that had shipped so it arrived like two days into my week and a half long trip <laughs> so I knew it was I knew it was gonna happen that's the way my life works but it was worth the wait I'm just gonna say right off the bat I think this is gonna be a huge hit for Spyderco I I hope they can make them fast enough and I can't wait to see the more variations they do because you know it's Spyderco it's gonna come in other steels other scale colors all that stuff it is, it's a super cool knife. What is it? Is this Para 3 Lightweight. We're going to bring out, uh, this is going to be a real size comparison because they are exactly the same. This is a regular Para 3. This is a Crew Wear uh, Knife Center exclusive version. You can see shape and everything. It's the same. Uh, but you have the FRN scales instead of the G10 with uh, virtually no liners at all, really just enough liner to hold the compression lock. So that's that's a, that's pretty cool. That is a new thing for Spider Coat. They're doing compression locks in the lightweight. They're also going to do a, a Sage 5 lightweight, which I'm very excited to uh, get my hands on one of those as well. Uh, I, I think it's really cool they're doing compression locks in the lightweight stuff. They have changed the FRN a little bit. I will talk about that more as we go on here. Um, and they're using a new steel, CD, CTS BD1N. Uh, that's kind of new for Spider. I think they may have done some fixed blades in that. I don't remember for sure, but I don't remember any folding knives with it. Not your, not your average old BD1 and the, with the N, nitrogen. It's got some more nitrogen in it. Uh, should have some, a lot better edge retention. As I said, this is kind of first impression, so I don't have... Uh, any like full-on uh, testing on that uh, but it, it should have better edge retention and as the name would indicate it is lightweight so let's just compare between this and your standard pair of three what about the scales here come on come on there we go you have a weight of just 2.4 ounces so well below that this is the three inch blade so well below that uh you know, one ounce to one inch ratio as compared to your regular pair of three. Yeah, it's it's almost a full ounce lighter than a regular pair of three, which is not uh, not insignificant. Other major change, it has the wire pocket clip on it. Hoorah! I, I love the wire pocket clip from Spyderco. And they, as you can see, they move the lanyard hole. This is an aftermarket uh, deep carry clip, uh, but it was required on the regular pair of three because of the location of the lanyard hole. I flip them over here. They decided to stick the lanyard hole up here. So when you have the spoon clip on this regular uh, pattern, yeah, it's, it sticks, you had, you know, this much knife sticking out of your pocket. It was pretty freaking ridiculous to be honest. So if you, uh, in my opinion, if you buy a pair of three, it's almost kind of an automatic purchase that you have to get one of the deep carry clips. I think this is an yeah, this is an MXG gear one, but not so with the lightweight. They moved the lanyard hole, they made it a little smaller and moved it, and put this lovely little wire clip on there, which makes so much more sense in my opinion. Let's do some uh, stats and size comparisons before we get too much farther, and then we'll we'll break this down a little bit more. Fairly small knife. Uh, you have an overall length of 7.3 inches. You have a, uh, a blade length of 3 inches, as I said, and you have a uh, the blade stock thickness of, I believe it's 0.14. That's what it was on the previous, I do believe. Yep, about 0.14. Handle thickness, yeah, a little less than half an inch, about 0.45. And weight, as I said, 2.4 ounces. So pretty lightweight little knife. Size comparisons. We already showed it against the uh, regular pair of three. It's pretty much identical. Quasi-regular pair of three, but they're all kind of that same shape. Your paramilitary two. And uh, we're 
we're gonna do uh well when this down one's not really a size comparison we're gonna use for something else getting ahead of myself and also uh bench me bug out this is definitely a comparison video you will see i promise you by the end of the week um uh, or this weekend um as i said i'm not i haven't had this long to do a full review on this first impressions then i'm going to do a little battle to the death with the benchmade bug out because they are similarly priced both really lightweight edc knives both with you know frn i think they call it grivery is what uh, benchmade calls it fancy plastic handles uh it's gonna I, i'm really looking forward to doing this uh, comparison honestly and like i said still first impressions of this so i'm not really sure which would win i have not scored anything out yet at all but you will definitely see that i'm gonna slate it for saturday i think is when i'm gonna try and do that by i'm gonna spend a lot of time with this up until then so let's talk about this knife uh you know as far as the blade goes the most important part of the knife is kind of just your typical typical spider co it is just uh you know, uh, your usual identical blade shape and everything that you have to a uh, to a pair of three. Let's check the thickness behind the edge. I can kind of almost guess what it's going to be because it is a Spyderco full flat grind. Yeah, about 21, 000, 20 thousand, 21 thousands behind the edge. Um, they're pretty, pretty typical of what you get on a regular pair of three. Uh, this BD1 end steel, as I said, uh, should be better than the bd1 that they usually use that's what i have on this is a uh, manix 2 lightweight they always use just regular bd1 and now they oh, i should really clean this thing off at some point in its life and uh, now they use bd1n it's supposed to be a better steel i i'm just going to take their word on that at the moment i can't really say for sure but looking at the makeup and stuff yeah it should probably have some better edge retention um other than that, you know, it's just the same blade we all know and love. The pair of three's got a bit of a dainty tip, but it's not crazy. It's not, it's it's a little thicker, I think, than what you see like on a PM2. So, I mean, that's that's fine. Um, uh, yeah, I don't want to do any prying with it or anything, but it's all right. Ergonomically, this thing is really good. Uh, it's, it's, I think, I think better than the regular pair of three. And why do I say that? Um, the pair of three is very blocky it's comfortable it's completely fine and i never really thought to complain about it but as you can see with the frn it's very sculpted all the way around on the edges and it's just super comfortable i mean it's yeah i and the this pocket clip is less of a hot spot the wire clip i like the multi-directional bi-directional yeah, the bi-directional uh, texturing it's great it's 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 excellent ergonomically it really really is um now as uh, far as comparing it to so this is made in golden colorado as is the manix 2 lightweight i will say and i think you would notice immediately if you have one of these even though they're both made in the same factory and using frn it, it's it's nicer on a pair of three it definitely is it's just a newer generation i think i don't think it's a uh, you know, they tried to make this nicer. I think it's just a generational thing. They've made the Manix too lightweight for quite some time. But you can see it's more molded. And just the and the logo looks fantastic on it, by the way. And they do the same thing they often do where the pocket clip rides on the logo. So it slides in on the pocket well. But it just looks a bit more quality, more rounded off. I'm really liking the plastic, you know, the FRN, the fancy plastic on the... Uh, on the pair of three lightweight a lot better than what you're seeing on the uh, manix two lightweight so, so as ergonomically and like feel wise and stuff it's just it's just better how does it carry let's bring out yield wranglers you know it's as far as like pocket dimensions it's the same as you'd expect any any pair of three to be but it is obviously lighter Slides in and out of the pocket very well. And look at that, right out of the factory without spending 20 bucks more on an aftermarket clip. Look at how discreet that thing is. Oh yeah. He likes that. Uh, but as far as that, it's just a regular pair of three, which means it carries okay. Um, it's not like a very super slim knife, but it is so light. I 
does does kind of disappear. I mean, you're not hitting anything sharp sliding your hand past it. But in this three inch category, you know you are gonna find knives that are shorter in this height dimension. Absolutely, if that's a concern of yours, you know, like for example, the uh, Benchmade Bug Out, I just, it's a little bit longer blade, but you can see like, this is just so much slimmer in the pocket. So there's that to keep in mind, but other than that, you know, it's lightweight, pocket clip's great. I think it carries pretty well. As far as the uh, deployment and action on it goes, I will say I did take this out of the box and I did turn, uh, did turn the pivot screw like a quarter turn. I saw some other people do some quick videos with them and they weren't free dropping. All it took me was a quarter inch turn and it free drops completely fine. You can spidey flick it, thumb flick it, all that stuff you want to do. You can slow roll it. And as you can see, as I'm closing this, yeah, quarter, quarter turn on one one side of the pivot and it's a total free dropper. Just as good as my regular pair of three is, uh, which is, which is high praise because that, that thing's pretty smooth and very well broken in. So very happy with the action on it. And you know, if you want to just use the compression lock and be a coolio, you can do that too. So I guess that's kind of to wrap it up for my first impressions. As I said, it will be in a comparison with the bug out and then and I'll do a long-term update or something sometime to give you a more complete full review. But yeah, my first impressions are uh, this was worth the wait. Uh, $91, if I didn't mention that before, I'll, I'll make sure to mention it first thing in the uh, description down below. For 91 bucks, compression lock, uh, an interesting steel. Uh, the jury is still going to be out on that steel, I think, until you know. It's, it's, some people put some more miles on it, but uh, it should be it should be really good for the price. I just uh, my first impression is I don't know how they're going to make these fast enough. <laughs> I mean, and like I said, I can't wait to see it in some of the other versions they've done. Like you know, they've done the I think the Manix Two Lightweight they did in the gray and Maximet. I'd be all over that. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see all the future versions, you know, they've always done in the lightweights. They've done S110V and the Blurple. Might be into one of those. We shall see what they come out with. I would imagine at Blade Show, um, we're going to see um, a several different versions of the Para 3 lightweight. I just kind of anticipate, because they are selling like the proverbial hotcakes. So, hope you guys have enjoyed this again. Just kind of first impressions. Um Look, look for that uh, comparison review later this week. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I've been Brian. Have a good one.